and welcome to this my third video in this series on creating a map using QGIS. So in this video I will be talking about filtering and subsetting data. More specifically what I want to do is that I want to talk about filtering by attributes so in this case only finding specific populated places. I'll be making a subsetting by selection. So I'll select some countries and make a subset of them. I will be talking about filtering attributes on raster. For matter of fact, I won't do that, but we will look at some aspects of it. And finally, I will be um, looking at subsetting a raster data set. So that's the topic that I will be covering in this video. In a other video, I um, downloaded data from Natural Earth and from EA and organized them in folders on my computer and loaded them into QGIS. So that's how I got to this result. As you can see, there's lots of different data here. And um, what I want to do here is that I want to um, focus in on Europe and specifically just Denmark, Sweden and Norway. So basically just this area here. And therefore I want to get rid of a lot of data elements here. So the first approach is that I want to basically just have the, the larger um, cities in here. I'm um, from Roskilde, which is this little city here. And there's about forty thousand inhabitants in this um, in this city. So I want to say, I want to include Roskilde in my map, but only towns from Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, where there is a population of more than forty thousand. You want to know something about which attributes are connected to your vector data, you can use the I2 up here. If I choose that and then click here on Roskilde, making sure that I, in my layer down here, have Roskilde selected, which it is, it will give me this description. So the name is Roskilde, and there uh, is, according to this data set here, a population of 46,000 um, inhabitants, um, and it is in the Søren area of Denmark, a Swedish town with a Jutteborg. So that has a population of 5,000. It's in the Søren area of Sweden. I'll be using these attributes. So these are the different attributes we have here and their values to filter out the data set. So I only want those that are in Sweden and Denmark and the Kingdom of Norway. So those are the countries I want, or sovereign regions. And then I want only those where the population max is larger than 40,000. Filter layer, just needs a bit more space here, and we go down to our layer. So this is the layer we want. We can right click on it and say filter. And let's start by um, filtering by countries or sovereign unit. So I want to say where my sovereign area, um, sovereign name. I have three different names that I can so I can use this this is called SQL in the description there is a link to a video or resources on working with SQL just scratching the surface in these videos in this case I'll be using the in operator which I can use to list a series of values that I'm interested in so I say in up here I can say all and that will give me the list of all the names. So I'm quite sure that I get the spelling correct. For instance, 
Kingdom of Norway does not Norway. So I will create brackets that and I said Denmark. Denmark a comma Sweden and Kingdom of Norway need a comma there. We need a comma between each of these parameters. So when I say okay, you can see that all of the German and Polish cities disappeared. So we now only have for Denmark and Sweden and Norway. I want to extend this filter, so I just click the filter symbol again and say furthermore, and if I have conditions where both conditions have to be met, I use a and specify that I want another condition to be held to. And this time I want to say that the population max, so I'll go down and find max part here has to be larger than 40,000. So that's it. Um, in general, if you have many of these, it can be a bit complicated and brackets are always um, good. So if you want to make sure that things are working as you expect, throw in some brackets. Um, not necessary in this case, but just for a good measure. So, and what you can also do is that you can test your little area here. So you can say test, and it will say that there were 37 populated places that met these criteria. So, time is pretty large. Though. Okay, and um, and that's it. I have now filtered a data set. A thing about a filter data set is that. It is exactly what it is. It is a filtered data set. So I have, it's still really the data set that I downloaded. It's not a new data set. If I want to just keep these 39 cities in Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, I would have to make a copy of this filtered data set. So in order to do that, I right click the layer and say export. I can just say export features because I am having all the features that I have filtered. QGIS prefers data to be stored in what is called a geo package. So it's a database, a geo database. Um, and this is just the format of it. To store in one of these, we can specify the name and path here, but easiest use the three dots and make sure that your data is stored in your project. So my QGIS project here. And this time I won't put them in my download because these are the data specific for this project. So I'll just call this database here. I probably also call Q QGIS map. It will um, default the layer name, so the feature class it will be called in our programs. It will default that to the name of the database. I want to call it populated places. Populated places. It will stick to the order reference system that it had originally, and that's okay in this case. I'll just leave it as is. Say okay. I'll be given a little notice that it is has been done, and over here I can see that I have a new data set without the filter on it, and I can now remove the original one. So now I have only those for this region here. It'll change how it looks in another video. Now I want to demonstrate another way of doing more or less the same. 
I now want to choose Denmark, Sweden and Norway because I want the borderlines of these countries and then export them into my geodatabase. In this case, I could do exactly the same using Filter, but to demonstrate, I will use a selection tool. So I basically just drag a little rectangle that contains all three countries and uh, uh, I didn't get what I expected. What I got was those cities and populated places that are in this selection. I just did there my selection. Make sure that countries are the selected layer and then drag my little rectangle. Now I have selected they are in yellow, these three countries. And to save them, I Go to my country database, my layer here, say export. But this time only I use this one, save selected features. Click the three dots, locate my database from before, and call them countries. And I now press OK. They will be stored. In that database, I should say that on a Mac you will get a warning that you're overwriting the data set, and that's okay as long as you just say add layer. So, first it will ask you, Is it do I want to overwrite this data set? You say, Yeah, but in the next question, you say, Do not replace the database, add the layer, otherwise, the first layer will disappear. If I now look in my project folder here. I have the database I created. But inside this database, I have my two layers. So that's a bit of difference on what a Mac does and what a Windows does, computer does here. Good. Um, I now need to do the same thing with my raster data here. I only want this area here. Um, but that's a bit, um, it's a, I can't, the raster data has got these objects I can select and do whatever. Um, so I can't use the same tricks that I use in vector data. If I want to, um, I mean, let's export it first and then I'll show a little trick about, um, displaying. No, no, no let's do that. First. So first of all, I just, because I'm going to model my data, I'll just make a copy of it. So what I can do here is I can do, go and duplicate layer. And I have two layers of the same one. That's because I wanted to show the thing about filtering, but I don't want to use the filter later. So in a raster data set, the only way you can filter things really is by hiding. So if I want to hide, all of these red ones, which are the cities, the only thing I can do is that I can go to the layer symbology, um, which is this one of layer styling, click on it, find my red one, and um, give it a bit more space. So, down here, find the minus. A bit of it now you can see all of my red areas have disappeared from my copy layer but are still in this layer here so that's simply a way of filtering in a um, in a raster uh, layer i should let's say if we now just because we'll be using it in a moment using this Online data set of street map. And I'll drag that to the bottom of my layer set. Okay, this layer, we see it now. The data set here that I filtered, quote, quote, um, we can now see our open street map layer here within the cities because it is, works just like a filter, only visually. There's another way of doing it. 
it's much more advanced I'll turn to that now I just don't need this copy anymore so I'll just get rid of that and what I'm interested in the original one here and I want to create a subset of that so do that I zoom to the AI I want to have in my subset so don't need and so something like this probably zoom a bit further in on my map purpose here what this and if I now go to my layer here my raster layer right click on that say export and say save as I have a new dialog box um you can store raster layers in the geo database so in your um geo package um it's generally best to do it as a geo tiff there are some things strange things about doing it in the um geo package file um so i prefer to do it as a geo tiff there's also this option to be aware of that it is raw data you are not the rendered so i'm not storing a picture file with the colors i'm storing the data click three dots find my database or my folder so do this and call this one global land cover uh, but yeah, that's fine um i haven't saved it yet but what's important now is before we save it we go down to this section here that says what part of it at the moment i can define AI by a layer by a layout map talk about them later or bookmark what i want to do here is i want to have this what is called the map canvas that is what i'm seeing on my screen so i'll choose map canvas you can see if i say layer i have one set values here so it depends on what i get down here which which um how many rows and columns so if i have the whole one this is the number if i click my little canvas air i get a much smaller number here so now i'm just exporting this little part and i can say okay and i'll get this gray looking thing because it has thrown out all the styling of my file you can see still have the original one with the original colors but it, when it has loaded in as new color it says hmm it's gray colors from 0 to 22 let's display that on the screen in the next video i'll be talking about how to style my layers make them look right get this sub area to look as the original one how to change the look of my cities and so on so hopefully See you in the next video about styling our layers. Bye.